Hi guys, my name is George and in this video we are going to see how easy it is to upload multiple files and store them in the server with PHP. So let's begin. First I will demonstrate the working code. So in the screen and on the right I have an upload form and on the left I have an empty folder called uploads. Let's go and choose some files. To select multiple files hold down the control key and click on the file you want. Let's upload the first three images. Now we'll click on the upload button and the form will send the images to the uploads folder. And here they are. Okay, now let's see how we do this. So let's jump to the editor and start coding. First of all, let's see what files we need. We need an index.php file, which is the file that we see right now. And it has a simple HTML structure. I have a functions.php file to write the upload code and a styles.css to make everything looks pretty. Now the CSS code is already typed, so we won't waste any time on it. Besides, the CSS code is not important for this tutorial. And last, I have an uploads folder in my project to save the uploaded files. So let's go to the index file and create a form. I will create a form element. I will leave the action attribute empty. That means that the form will submit it to the same page. I will set the HTTP method to post and I will set the ENC type attribute to multipart form data. Now, this is important. Without the ENC type attribute, the browser will not send the files to the server. So every time we want to upload files, we have to set the ENC type attribute to multipart form data. Now, inside the form, let's create a form title. Next, I will create an input element and I will set the type attribute to file. This will give us the choose file button. Next, I will set the name attribute to files, but I will turn the string to an array. This is important. We have to use an array in order to upload multiple files. The browser will store all the information of the selected files in the files array, so we can fetch them in our PHP code. And last, we have to use the multiple attribute. So the browser will allow us to choose more than one file. Next, I will create a button. I will set the type to submit, the name to upload, and the text to upload files. Now, as I said, the empty action attribute tells the browser to submit the data in the same page. That's why we will go to the top of the page to catch them. I will open PHP tags, and the first thing that I will do is to require the functions.php file. So we have access to the PHP code that we are going to write there. Next, I'm going to check if the upload button is clicked by checking the super global files variable. The files key is our files array in the name attribute. Now, if this is the case, I will call the upload, the upload files function and I'm going to pass in the super global files variable. Now, the upload files function doesn't exist yet. We are going to define the function in the functions.php file in a minute. Also, I will catch whatever the function returns in the response variable. And also, I have to declare the variable outside the if statement so we don't get an error. Now, let's check our form in the browser and then we go to the functions.php file to write the upload files function. Let's reload the page. Nice. We see our upload form. Now let's go to the functions.php file. Now the first thing that we will do in the file is to define the upload files function. The files variable is holding the data from the superglobal files variable. Next and inside the function I will check if there are any selected files. If not, we will return a message that says please select at least one file. Now let's see how I came up with this reference. The Super Global Files Array stores the data in a multidimensional associative array. Let me show you. I will do a var export on the files variable. Now this is a neat trick to structure an array in an easy readable way. You will see. Now let's bring the browser in the screen and upload a few files. Now let me explain what we see here. The top array is the super global files array, which holds an array called files. Remember, this is the name attribute of our, of our input field. 
Now, the files array is holding a name array, a type array, a temp name array, an error array, and a size array. The name array is holding the uploaded file names, the type array is holding the file types, the temp name array holds the temporary paths that the uploaded files are stored, and the error, the error array holds any upload error that may occur, and the size array holds the sizes of the uploaded files. Now, if we go back to our if statement, we see that we are targeting the index 0 of the name array, which name array is inside the files array. So, if there is no value on index 0, the user has pressed the upload button without selecting any files. Let me quick show you. Let's click on the upload button without selecting any files. We see that the index 0 in the names array has no value. Therefore, the condition is true and we return a message. I hope I explained it in a way that makes sense. OK, now let's continue with the upload function. Under the if statement, I'm going to create a variable named folder and I will set it equal to the uploads folder. Next, in a variable named names, I will store the name array. And I will do the same thing with a temp name array. Now the names array will hold every uploaded file name and the temp names array will hold the uploaded file's temporary location. Now I will use the array combine function and I will create from the temp names and the names a single array and I will store it in the files array variable. The array combine function returns an associative array which has as keys the temp names and as values the file names. So the order of the arguments matters. Next, I will use the for each function to loop through the files array. In every iteration, we are going to grab the keys of the files array in the temp folder variable and the values in the image name variable. And now, inside the loop, I will use the move uploaded file function to move the uploaded file from the temporary location to the uploads folder. And when all the files are stored in our folder, I will return the string success. Now, have in mind that I didn't validate the files because this is not in the scope of this tutorial. So don't use this script on a live project without any validation. OK, our PHP code is completed, but we have a last thing that we have to do in the index file. And that is to output the success message or the error that the response variable holds. So under the submit button, I will open PHP tiles. And if the response variable is equal to success, I will display the success message. Else, I will display whatever the response variable holds, which in our case is an error. And that's it. Let's bring the browser in view and let's test out our code. Let's choose again our files. Click on the upload button and nice. We see the success message and we see the files are stored in our upload folder. And that's it, guys. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you like, and see you in the next one.